Welcome to Sustain News, where we bring you renewable energy and sustainability news. Today we're joined by Ronny Bendenspur, Senior Originator at Munich Re for Weather and Commodity. Munich Re Group is one of the world's leading providers for weather insurances and is now also strategic partner with our own company, Think Re. Welcome to Sustain News, Ms. Spur. First, can you please introduce yourself? Yeah, sure, happy to. My name is Ronnie Benden Spur, and I'm working at Minigree's weather and commodity team as an originator. The weather team I'm in is based in two locations. One is Zurich, and the second is Houston in the US. And from Houston, we basically do cover North and South of America, as well as Australia. And basically from Zurich, we do in the rest of the globe. My area of focus is the renewable energy sector and mainly all parts of Europe. And I'm also building our presence in Asia Pacific um, and they're focusing mainly on the Japanese market. Probably a little bit to our client set, just to give you an idea. So most of our clients are our utilities, our start worker, our project developers, investors, retailers, and transport industries and many others. So in the end, basically, yeah, 70% of the industries globally are exposed to indirectly or directly to changes in weather. So that means it's quite a wide segment we are active in. Thank you. Now, can you tell us how is the demand for weather-based insurance developing considering climate change? Yeah. So I think there are multiple drivers that are triggering demand for weather-based structures. And one is certainly the increasing um, frequency and severity of extreme weather events, such as hurricanes, weather storms, tsunamis, extreme reef, rainfall or droughts. Um, and to cover such events, parametric insurances, so-called NAPCAT insurances, become more and more popular. However, I think in that segment, uh, there will be more and more development going forward, um, especially the large multinational corporates, industries, investors and banks, they're just at the beginning or didn't even start to see how their business and their current portfolios are actually impacted by climate change driven developments. So in this light, I think there will be way more um, activity going forward. And another driver is of course the change in along the long-term mean so that's basically weather parameters like temperature, wind speed, solar radiation um, that are somewhat impacted by climate change. And we can see certain trends in, in the data that will, and it's already impacting business cases. So if we take last year, for example, and certain developments in wind speeds uh, in Central Europe, like Germany, or also in the UK, um, that you see that some areas, the wind is just basically decreasing and decreasing. And if we look at our models, for example, then that low wind that we saw last year in summer was uh, not a one in 100 year event, it was more like a one in 20,000 years event. So basically a development really in the tail of the distribution. That also means that for now, those trends, uh, you shouldn't underestimate them. and one should really keep an eye on them um, and try to hedge your projects, your portfolio against that. Um, but it's not only the extreme low scenario, it's also the other side, right? Renewable energy sources are by far the cheapest. And of course, you are really heavily impacted uh, if you have a low wind or low solar radiation scenario these days, because especially in PPAs, for example, you then have to cover um, from the spot spot marks are high. Uh, so if you are short, everybody is short. And if you sitting in a base load PPA as a, as a seller, then of course you're quite exposed. All right. So what role do insurance solutions play in the expansion of wind and photovoltaic plants? Yeah, uh, that's, that's a good one. We see that weather solutions become more and, and frequent, um, more popular and frequently requested to that. And I think one of the main reasons we, we see is that renewable, the renewable energy sector is basically just undergoing a total transformation, right? From coming from a very 
heavily subsidized market now into a scheme that is mainly focusing on merchant risk. Also, more projects going fully merchant or entering into long-term PPAs, which involve volume risk. Um, they're either borne by the seller or by the buyer. Um, and this changes totally the market dynamics because it brings to the table the need for active risk management and the water, weather positions may it be now a single park or may it be a whole portfolio are uh, more and more in, in the focus now. In addition to that, you have players entering the field that are way more risk adverse, like pension funds, for example, or family offices, where we also, of course, see that you know, governments and regulatory bodies are also requesting to have like, risk mitigation tools, for example, if projects entering into tenders, like we saw in the Netherlands uh, in the last years. And that, of course, makes it more interesting for players that hadn't been in touch with weather or commodity risk transfers in the past now to enter that space. And it's quite an educational process, but we see that especially in the, in the year now or in the last yeah, couple of months where there was so much pressure on power prices, on gas prices, that now those people that have been especially hurt or their portfolio was hurt are now actively searching and going out and approaching us. Whereas I think in the last years or in the years before, it was mainly, you know, the insurance industry marketing it, being active, speaking to people. And now we're getting actually more requests coming in saying, look, uh, we need help here. Okay. Now, what are the biggest challenges in integrating weather hedges? for renewable projects. If we're looking at Europe, the weather hedging started probably a good 20 years ago. And that's mainly utilities in the power retail sector, um, where those companies try to protect their P&L on a sub-seasonal or a yearly basis, right? So this is where it came from. They want to protect themselves against too warm or too cold winters, either on a standalone basis or in combination with gas prices. And if you look at that segment, those players are very well for aware how they can apply that now to renewables, to wind, to solar, to hydro. Um, and they easily can just use the historical performance, the forecasts, and, and there are methodology to put a tri the price tag on how much that risk actually is in their books. But that's just one part of the segment. And, and the other, you know, like especially in the renewable energy sector where that's a rather new to topic. And especially if it comes to project financing, uh, we saw now that for all merchant projects, PPAs became a good hedge to establish bankability. But now you also realize after writing some PPAs and having some PPAs in your books, that that still inherits some risk, which is mainly volume driven risk, right? And, and wind speeds. In order to integrate such hedges there, it's again, a lot, a long process and it's educational. You have to take most stakeholders that are involved by the hand. So the project developer, the investor, especially also the banks, because they have a very a first conservative approach and taking those approaches it's also the, the important one to match it with the perspective of a reinsurance or insurance company especially the tenor plays a big role in such structures what is important to mention i think is that once that concept's understood and that concept is planted as a small seed in people's brains that that idea is evolving it's it's growing and i believe that that will become a big tree at a certain point and that hatching in renewables will become as normal as it is now in the utility sector. I think where there needs to be a lot of understanding for is that if you really take care of your volume risk in the first place, the exposure that you have to the price risk and especially to a volatile market as we see it at the moment becomes smaller and smaller. That's one side. And the other thing is um, people tend to look for perfect hedges, meaning like a hedge that is fitting 100% their exposure. They don't want to carry the basis risk. But that mostly results in a very high premium and very expensive solution. In the end, it needs to be a, a basis risk or uh, equation is 
how much basis risk I'm still willing to hold and how much I'm wanting to pay to re bring that risk to somebody in that market that can probably hold it or warehouse that risk more cost efficiency or more cost efficient than I can do that. Thank you. Now we arrive at our last question. Could you explain how exactly an insurance covers PPA deals or other renewable energy agreements? Yeah. So, at first of all, one can say that in the renewable energy sector and the energy sector in total, um, probably 90% of all the structures are actually financial derivatives and probably 10% are insurances. But that's just like the paper they're, they're written on. But from a concept perspective, in order to keep it simpler, um, probably choosing a wind project and that is of course in most times and especially in the PPA uh, quite exposed to the volume risk right um, so let's say a seller is giving a PPA out as a base load let's say a monthly base load so meaning like he has to fulfill a certain volume given per month in case he's short in that month then he has the exposure of the volume times the price that he has to compensate it for at the spot. So that's that's kind of the risk uh, that the company is warehousing. So you basically set a strike somewhere at the point of megawatt hours, for example, that needs to be reached. If it falls below that, so meaning that the risk is basically triggered, uh, then for every megawatt hour that the park is short, um, such a cover would compensate. So I mean, you get a certain p payment that can be, let's say, X euro per megawatt hour that could be either pre-agreed or it could be also the delta between the PPA price and what then has to be paid at the market, for example. The same can be done for uh, solar radiation, precipitation, etc. Thank you so much for taking your time to explain these interesting insights. Thank you. It was a pleasure. That was Sustain News. We're happy to share more sustainability news with you on this platform. Follow us on LinkedIn and YouTube on our company page, Think Re. And subscribe to our newsletter for more Sustain News. Thank you so much for watching and we wish you an electrifying day.